Well, welcome everyone. I'm glad you were able to join us tonight. This is definitely not the way we thought that we'd be starting our fourth quarter, but here we are, and I'm glad that you're able to be here with us tonight. I'd like to take a minute for our panel to introduce themselves. So I'm Michelle Condon, your superintendent. I am Cindy Nelson, Chief Human Resources Officer. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Romay, Chief Financial Officer. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Painter, Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Hey guys, I'm Matt Bailey, Assistant Superintendent for Student Services and Special Programs. Hello, I'm Ginger Casey, Community Relations and Development. I will serve as the moderator this evening. Thank you for sending in questions during the registration process. Our presentation was built around some of the submitted questions. The webinar format for tonight is a typical format where the panelists and the pre pre presenters are visible. Uh, the attendees' videos and microphones are not on tonight. If you have additional questions as we get to the end of our presentation, we will answer as many as possible. To submit a question, you can just use the Q&A button. It's, would be, it's located either at the top or the bottom of your screen. We will not be utilizing the raise hand option tonight within the webinar technology. Dr. Condon, I believe those are all the housekeeping items we needed to mention. We're also gonna be recording. We yes. are recording. We will post the webinar. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Ginger. Um, our team has been working hard this week and last week to provide a sense of security and continuity for all of our students and families and staff. If you've been glued to the news like I have, it becomes easy to develop a sense of concern about the unknown. Our teachers, students, and parents are delving into a territory that will be new for all of us. And I just want you to know that we're all in this together and that we're here for you. So you'll notice a theme in our presentation tonight, and that is to provide yourself, your children, and our teachers grace. Our plan is to start out slowly. We are not entering into a competition. We are entering into a safe space, a space where we can have an opportunity to reach out to each other, to learn from each other, and to come out better, stronger, and wiser. We've encouraged our teachers to take time to rebuild a sense of community and the structures that they had with their classes before spring break. What is most important right now is that we continue to enhance the connections that we have with each other. Our teachers will be doing this by developing engaging instruction where students have opportunities to interact with them and with their classmates. Tomorrow will be like the first day of school all over again. And some good news is that next week will be our official spirit week for the Kirkwood School District. We'll be pushing out some additional information soon about KSD Spirit Week for our students and families so that we can continue to grow and strengthen our connections. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Painter, who's going to share some information about what instruction will look like beginning tomorrow, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Thank you, Dr. Kahn, and we certainly appreciate your leadership. First of all, I hope everyone's well. Um, it has been a delight to have our teachers back in a way over the last couple of days. Um, there really is no script for this, however. As Dr. Conan said, we truly are navigating into uncharted uh, waters, and we're fortunate that our teachers and our principals can rely on the connections and the strong relationships that they've already forged with our students, with our parents, and with our guardians. Um, while there are many uncertainties before us, I can say with certainty um, that our teachers are fully invested in all of the work that they're doing and in loving and caring for your kids in an online environment just as they would in a classroom. If you have not visited Kirkwood's COVID-19 website, I encourage you to do so. Um, we are uh, adding information here pretty much daily um, with specific sessions for our families and our students sections. Um, you will notice the address for our, families, uh, for our family site at the bottom of each of the remaining slides, and we encourage you to visit there. We hope to share several big picture ideas with you tonight um, and answer your questions, and we'll deal with the logistical information as well that we're guessing is on your mind. 
Um, much of our presentation time will be spent on how parents and guardians can support their children through this work as we navigate into this together. Um, there are several big themes, themes to our work, however. First and foremost, I hope you kind of really hear this as, as we go throughout our dual emphasis on learning and on wellness. Yes, we will be using our iPads and our laptops to continue learning and, and teaching and learning with kids. Um, we've been a one-to-one -one district for some time, and so that's going to play into our benefit um, as we move forward. Um, we still hold ourselves accountable to growing our students, even as we move slowly, and frankly, as we find our way together. Um, but we must also focus squarely on the well-being of our children, on the well-being of our staff, and on the well-being of you as parents and guardians. Um, nothing about our world seems normal right now, but we'll get through it if we support each other. Um, as we move through the next several slides, please know that you can find the information in more detail on our COVID-19 website. Um, I will not be reading this to you, nor will I be talking specifically about every idea. Um, while we're just starting online tomorrow, it's important to note that there are teachers around the world who've been doing this online teaching for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. We've paid attention to what they've said works and what maybe hasn't worked. Um, and our teachers have shared amazing ideas about how they'd like to reconnect um, with our learners uh, over, the, over tomorrow, um, but over the next several weeks. Um, we plan very intentionally to start slow. And we're going to teach into our routines and expectations. We, we, have, to have, we have to build in time to, to build that community, just like we do each August. When we have, and, and we have to get a sense of what our students and our families are able to do um, and what they can handle before we even think about picking up the pace. We believe so strongly in this uh, that you'll notice on each of our slides we have this little turtle that's been added throughout the presentation just to remind us that we are intentionally going slow. We've also asked our teachers to manage their instructional expectations, focusing more on review than on new content, specifically as we get started. Um, this obviously will look different at um, different grade levels. A lot of our presentation will, um, but we have to give everyone a chance to adjust to our new normal of learning online before we start adding additional new content into the mix. Finally, we cannot overestimate our need for social emotional support and connection at this time, not just our kids, but us as adults as well. Um, nothing about this, as I said, is normal. A rapid switch to fully online teaching and learning would be difficult in the best of circumstances. Um, but we're not in the best of circumstances. Our kids are separated from their friends and from family members and from things that we like to do. Um, add in the way, the potential weight of financial worries that you may be feeling, the possibility of people getting sick, and the uncertainties about how, how long this may last. Um, we all need a great deal of support right now. We'll get through it. Um, but we'll get through it because we can lean on each other and support each other. Now let's shift um, to how our parents and our guardians can help our children be successful. We'll explore each of these bullet points in more detail um, on, the, on, the, on the following slides. First, um, you can help your students, help your children establish a schedule. Whatever this is going to look like in your household is fine, um, but you want to be thinking about what does the schedule look like. We know that routines are important for everyone, especially right now when there's so many things that we really cannot control. Um, as we go into this, we're calling this KSD Learns Online. Most of what we do is going to be asynchronous learning. Mm -hmm. That means that we'll be moving at our own pace um, and, at our, and, and we won't necessarily be doing the same things at the same time. Um, our teachers, you'll, you'll hear more about this as we go forward, but our teachers are going to typically have um, office hours from 10 to 2 each Monday through Friday. And that doesn't mean that's the only time they're working. They're doing a lot of other times as well. But from 10 to 2, they'll be available to meet with our kids. Um, and it, it could be that they're doing some direct instruction online um, through Zoom, or they could just simply be online so they can communicate through Schoology or they can answer questions that are necessary. Um, this will vary by age as you think about your schedule. Frankly, if you have teenagers, there's no reason for them to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning unless they get up that early on their own. But their bodies like to sleep longer. Um, and so if they can sleep till 8 or 9 and, or even later and they can still get their work done, 
this is the perfect chance for them to do that. Next, I just wanna remind everybody that we're all being impacted and we're being impacted differently. So whatever schedule works for you is fine. Just make sure that you are work, talking about that with your families. As you prepare a learning space, just it's important to remember that um, it's better, it's, this, is, this is gonna vary by family as well, but it's better to have a space that is kind of dedicated for this work. Um, doing it in your bedroom or where there's TV gaming going on may not be the best place for your family, um, but you just wanna have those conversations with your kids about what is the best place. Having shared spaces where adults and the students kind of work together does allow you to monitor what they're doing a little bit more, and it might give you an opportunity to support your kids. But we also recognize that many of you have situations in your families where as adults, you have other obligations. You're working from home, or maybe you're not even at home at all. And so we can't assume that the adults are going to be there um, to work with the kids all of the time. Um, we know that it's going to be difficult for a lot of us. And so, um, and, and frankly, it's, it's difficult for a lot of our teachers because they often have their own children at home as well that they're trying to support. And then finally, because we are going to be doing Zooms like this, you want to be mindful of where might your student be on a Zoom call. Um, just be aware of the fact that sometimes you can see what's behind you. And so um, as you talk about where your kids might establish their learning space, um, just think about what it might look like on camera. Um, not that anybody's going to be judging, but you just want to make sure that, that, that what's behind you is going to be okay to be on camera. Um, next, I'll talk briefly about this. Um, it's important to remind kids about their digital citizenship expectations, about netiquette. Um, really, it's about being, make, being kind on, on, in an online environment and making safe choices. We've actually been working all year long um, on digital citizenship with our common sense education lessons. And so you could refer back to those. Those are on our website, not on this site, but they're, they're linked um, to our Kirkwood website. Um, but it's really important to remember that the positive online behaviors that are important every day are even more important right now because online is the only, the only way we've got it. Um, it's much more difficult to go to school the next day and apologize to your friend um, if, if maybe you make a choice that wasn't, un, that wasn't so kind. We talked about wellness earlier, and it's really important that we are really, really thinking about um, monitoring our child's well-being. We have to be mindful of the stress and the, um, and the emotional wellness that's happening for them. And we have to recognize that many of our kids are going to be mourning the loss of normal school and really normalcy to begin with. Um, this is especially evident for our seniors and even for our fifth graders and eighth graders who are thinking about, this is the last time I have in this school and this level that I'm gonna be, be here. And they're missing some things, they really are. And so make it okay to, to, for, the, for your kids to be sad about that. Um, I will also say that the uh, novelty, the excitement of this online learning that I hear from so many of our kids right now, it may wear off a little bit um, in, in a week or two. And so just be ready for that as well. Um, we need to schedule regular times, not just for our kids, but for all of us to get away from the technology. It's, it's important for us to build in movement and exercise times. It's important for us to, to think about ways we can learn without our technology. I know that sounds counterintuitive to say, to say wait, but we're doing one-to-one -one online learning right now. Um, and you're saying get away from the technology. Yes, we are. We are saying that because um, being in front of your computer or your iPad all day long is probably not a good thing. Actually, we know it's not a good thing. And so um, find those ways that you can step aside, step away, um, and, and do other good things that are, that are healthy for you as well. And then lastly, on this slide, I just want um, to remind folks that um, as adults, we are feeling this stress. Of course we are. How could we not be? And so just be mindful of our reactions to the stress and what that might mean to our kids. Communicating regularly is very, very important. We will be using email and Schoology and Zoom as our main um, communication tools. Um, Schoology is our learning management system, and I'll talk more about that in a second, but that is the, probably the best platform for us to communicate with school going back and forth, but email is certainly a good option as well. Um, there's a little grid here that you can see that kind of shows if you have questions about this, this is who you contact. Um, but the main thing is just know that, they're, that we're always here for you. And so if you have any questions, if you have any concerns about your kids at all, be proactive with that. Talk to your teachers, reach out to them and say, hey, I'm noticing this, or um, can you tell me more about this? Our teachers care, they love our kids, they wanna support you, and st that's what they're here for. Um, 
this, this almost goes without saying, but we need to make sure that our kids have what they need in order to be successful. And sometimes that is, they need the school supplies they, they need. They need pencil, they need paper, that sort of thing. They need, their, they need a place to sit with their computer and, be, and have, have the quiet if that's what they need to do. But we also need to make sure that they have um, the food that they need or they have the internet access they may, may need. And so um, please, if you have food insecurity concerns or if you have internet access concerns, reach out to us and make sure that we can support you with that the best that we can. Um, we also are fully aware that somebody who is, is, does not have food insecurities right now, a month from now, that may not be the case just because of what's going on in our world. And so um, don't, don't think that you've missed your, your possibility or opportunity there because um, we'll do everything we can to support you on that. And then finally for me, um, the last one is um, we want to familiarize yourself as, as, as parents, as guardians, with Schoology and Zoom. These are the two main platforms we're going to be using to educate and work with your kids. Um, Schoology, as I said, is our learning management system. It's a digital workflow system that allows us um, to assign things to kids, whether they're graded or not, but their, their assignments, their tasks that they do, um, and then they can work on it within Schoology, they can submit it back, and then they can get feedback from teachers as well. There are so many great tools in there, audio, video sort of things, and as parents, you can actually, if you don't have this already, you, you can, but um, you can go and you can have a login and it's synced to your students' information, and so it's almost like looking into their backpack or looking into their Trapper Keeper when we were kids so that we can go in and we can um, you can look and see what the teachers are saying about their work, and you can look at their calendar to see when things are due, all of those great things that help you stay in touch um, with what your kids are doing. And that's not just right now when we're doing online learning, that's all the time. And so, um, so if you don't have an account already, um, you can look on our website and find out how you can do that. And then Zoom. Dr. Painter, just Dr. Painter, just to, there was a question about Schoology having a calendar system. Yes. And there is there is one in Schoology. There there is one in Schoology as well. And really, when the when teachers make assignments, it it I think it it automatically populates on the on the student's calendar uh, for them to see um, when it's due. Um, now, just know that um, when we have the due dates, maybe shifted a little bit now. Um, because of, of, of how we're doing things. But, um, but if you have any questions on that, you can certainly talk to your kids and to your teachers about that. And then Zoom is everywhere right now. Everybody's talking about Zoom. Um, and our students um, are, are going to be no different than that. And so we will be using Zoom um, and sometimes for real-time instruction. Our, our teachers may do mini lessons on, on Zoom for kids who can be on. We're trying to record as many of those mini lessons as we can and post them back in Schoology. So if if you have bandwidth issues, if we have, if you have multiple kids who can't all be online at the same time, we want to be able to give those kids an opportunity to go back and, and check that out later. Um, but uh, we're just, it even could be one-on-one -on -one conferencing with kids as well. And so um, particularly in that 10 to two window when, when our teachers are going to be readily online, that's an opportunity for us to, uh, to, to use Zoom potentially with between school and home. At this point, I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Bailey, uh, mostly because he, he is our liaison with Special School District and he has some additional information to share. Thank you, Dr. Painter. And I wanna thank all of the parents that are joining us tonight. I know that this is a difficult time for everybody and I know how concerned you are about your students. And so we appreciate you taking some time to spend with us. Um, please know that our teachers and our staff are all working very, very hard to ensure that we can provide the best educational opportunity for all of your students. And I can tell you as a parent myself of school age children, this is a very stressful time. And I can also tell you as a parent of a young lady who's got some special needs, this is a very special stressful time. So for our parents uh, with students with IEPs um, and 504s and any other learning um, challenges that we have, we wanna make sure that you guys know, we understand the additional challenges that you have and the additional worry and concern that you may have as well. Um, and we want to make sure that you guys feel comforted by the fact that our special education teachers have been working in collaboration with our Kirkwood team to really try to provide the best programming that we can given the circumstances. So the special education teachers will be, again, using the 10 to 2 office hours. Um, if they haven't done so already, they'll be contacting every family on their caseload um, at the weekly basis. I will tell you that we continue to get different guidance from the federal government. Um, regarding just special education pieces. So some of these may adjust and adapt as we continue to, to go through our closure processes. We wanna to continue to collaborate with teachers, related service personnel, ABA, other personnel within SSD and Kirkwood School District to again, 
ensure that we are able to provide some of those best uh, educational uh, supports for our students. I will tell you as well, when it comes to things like IEP timelines and meetings, uh, please reach out to your case manager or your resource teacher about those because there is some different guidance regarding those uh, IEP meetings that have come up based on the school closures. Logistic wise, uh, we've had lots of questions just about are we going to be required to make these days up and the first answer to that is no. Uh, the state is not going to be requiring us to make these days up, which is good news. Um, also, we've had questions about MAP testing or end of course exams. Uh, the state has canceled MAP testing and EOC testing for this spring. So our students will not be required to take part in those tests, which is good uh, for all of our students and good for our teachers as well. We also still want to take a look at if your child is too sick to participate for the day, uh, we want you to follow your normal attendance procedures and call the attendance office. And then if you could also email your students teachers. And again, this isn't just if they need a doctor's appointment or if they're going to be missing just an hour of that time. This is just for those students who are just too sick to be able to participate that day in some of the learning that they have going on. While the state is not requiring us to report some of the attendance pieces, we want to track that for our purposes so that we can ensure that we're providing the best supports and services for, for all of our students. If you do have some technology issues, we will have a live chat help desk that'll be available between eight and four each day. Um, and that'll be for technology issues. And that's available on our website. Also, if you have a need to talk to somebody and you're not exactly sure who you need to talk to, or if you just want to make sure that you get through to speak to someone, we do have our temporary KSD hotline available. And you can see the number on this sl uh, slide there, 213-6121. And that will be available from eight to four as well. And also, please feel free to contact your school counselor, your grade level counselor, if you have social worker support for some of those social emotional supports. And please don't feel like those calls need to be just for your student, because we know as parents, you're going to be stressed as well. And you may need some additional supports or at least some access to some services that you aren't sure about yet. So feel free to make those calls to those support staff members. And then again, to cycle back and, and talk about reminders, we will be starting slow. And when we say teaching into expectations and building for success, it very much looks like the beginning of a school year where we're reestablishing those routines, procedures, expectations with our students. We'll continue to do more review and less new content early on, really with a focus on getting first used to online learning for our students. Um, many of our students have not used some of this platform, so we want to ensure that our students are successful. We want to have an initial focus on feedback more than formal grades. So we'll have a lot of formative assignments, formative assessments, and give our teachers a chance to provide that feedback to the students without necessarily having a penalty of grade because of the change in learning platform. Not everything that we do will require you to be online or require technology. In fact, many teachers may give assignments to find something in your house to draw or to explore nature outside or to utilize coins or to do different hands-on activities that you may have available in your house. Please do make use of the 10 to two office hours. Our teachers and staff will be available uh, during that time. Uh, make sure that you're using email as a good way or as Dr. Painter said, Schoology is a good way to contact. And again, please, please, please pay attention to your wellness, not just your students' wellness and your children's wellness, but your own as well. Uh, because as parents, we need to have all the energy that we can possibly have to support our students. We recognize that many of you are still working full time um, and many of you may have some employment challenges that are coming up and that those are stressful times as well. We wanna ensure that you are taking care of yourself so that you can help us take care of your students as well. Okay, we're about at the 30 minute mark and um, Brian, if you would, Dr. Payne, if you go ahead and take your screen share off and we could, um, address some of these questions. So someone wants to know, Dr. Uh, Condon, if we think that we will be back to school um, this school year. Well, that's really a good question. Um, the St. Louis area superintendents have been collaborating um, and uh, we do plan to collaborate soon uh, prior to um, the April 22nd date for sure. Uh, it will really just depend uh, a lot on the advice that we're given by the St. Louis County Health Department um, and, and they'll be monitoring the spread of the virus. Um, if we remain in seclusion uh, in our homes, then we will likely have to extend the uh, 
the time out. So we will be in contact with you as we learn more. Thank you. Will my middle school be able to handle most learning without parental supervision or intervention during the work day? Let's take that one, Dr. Bailey. <laughs> That is our hope. When we talk about formative assessment and feedback and cycling in, we wanna make sure that our students first are able to, especially in the beginning, that what we're assigning and what we're providing to them are skills that they should have already had developed. Now with the time off that we've had, we may need to kind of do a refresher for those students, but we certainly want to have the emphasis on uh, it being independent with those uh, assignments, being independent with the skills that we're providing, focusing on those essential standards and essential content that we have because we know as parents, you may not always be able to support or help those students. Many of you have other things and jobs you have to take care of. So we wanna focus on what students can do at an independent level. There are also lots and lots of tools out there for our students to access using online supports. Our teachers will provide online supports as well. If they have questions, um, they can look some things up. Now is the time to definitely have students use all the tools that are available to them uh, to be able to process the content. When should we expect to receive information from our teacher? Well, that is, um, it, it may vary somewhat by school, but the expectation is that our teachers are reaching out to our parents. Um, if, not, um, if not today, then certainly tomorrow. Um, I, I know I, I'm, I'm a parent of a Kirkwood student and I've received several emails and actually to the point where the teachers are feeling bad because they know that many of us are getting multiple emails. and so. Um, we're trying to work on that to streamline things, uh, those things, particularly at the middle and high school level where they have many, where they have, may have several teachers. And maybe there's a problem with technology or something. If you haven't heard from your teacher, please, you know, shoot an email to them or call helpline so that we can make sure that uh, there isn't a problem with technology in some way. Exactly. Also, is school starting for the kids at its regular time or does it start at 10 a.m. with the teachers? I think office hours, maybe we should explain. Sure, um, that, that really is, it's, it's kind of up to you. Um, I've seen several schedules out there um, that are, you know what, we're gonna get up at regular time because that's what's going to work for our family. And so I wanna make sure you get up and yes, you take a shower and yes, you change your clothes and all of those things and we're gonna have breakfast and then we're gonna sit down at the, at, at the iPad or the, or the laptop and then we're gonna open up the assignments and see what's happening there. Um, I believe that many of our teachers, particularly at the secondary level, um, the, the expectation is that any new learning for that day, any new assignments will be in Schoology by 8.30 a.m. Um, and so that, that kind of is roughly, for the middle school at least, it, that's ballpark of when they normally start their day. Um, but I would say that there are some families where, again, like I was saying earlier, if you have a, a, a teenager who likes to stay up late and likes to get up um, late as well, then maybe your day starts a little bit differently um, and, and they don't start their learning day until later in the morning. The office hours of 10 to 2 are the times that teachers are available to respond to questions and will be online. Uh, so even if your child begins working at 8.30 or 9 o'clock after logging into Schoology, uh, the teachers will be available for questions between the hours of 10 and 2. And the response from the teacher may not be immediate. Those are, we're just trying to set parameters so that um, we don't have teachers you know, all day and all night. You know, those are just the hours where emails and things will be responded to or more than like, you know, reached out to, correct? Is that? Yes, um, yes. But there may also be some links in, in their child's Schoology account or something that is an invitation to, we're going to have a lesson at this time on Zoom. And mm -hmm. so this would be a time for you to log in and be a part of that. We get the text and notifications that we used to when the students got a grade or missed an assignment. I'm assuming that's still working or? Uh, it, it is, but I think it, it, we, we probably want to take it with a grain of salt for a little while at least. Um, the, the Schoology notifications honestly have never been completely accurate because the grades um, are being put in Infinite Campus and not in Schoology. Um, Infinite Campus, if you're talking about those notifications, um, yes, it, in theory, that would be the same um, situation, 
but again, because we are, for at least the time being, we're focusing more on, on formative feedback, on feedback that helps us with our learning um, than on, on the actual grades. Uh, there may be some assignments that are ungraded, or there may be some assignments even that are um, weighted differently than they might have been in the past. And so we, um, if you have any questions about that, if you get a notification or if you get no notifications and you're used to getting lots of notifications um, about missed assignments, then you may reach out to your, your teacher and say, am I right about this? And just to, I know that at the high school, because there's multiple classes, um, that they are having the same schedule as at school as if they were in school. Now they don't all have to be on, if they have a live Zoom, not all students have to be on that live Zoom at that time, but they're trying not to overlap um, with the other schedules. I don't know if anybody, if I explained that correctly or if anybody wants to add to that. Matt, you wanna talk about that? Well, I think that the, the thought that the high school teachers had especially is that when you've got five, six or seven classes, we want to try to help structure the workload for the students, especially to be able to manage and make it as normal and as, as close to mirroring that normal day as possible. But yes, I do not believe that students who miss that Zoom, and it's one reason for us to be recording some of those and putting them within Schoology, who miss those sessions uh, would be penalized. Again, we're looking at doing a lot of formative pieces uh, for those assessments. Now, I will say one thing that they may miss is the opportunity to ask some questions in a live one-on-one -on -one or a group format. Um, so they may have to do some email sessions with that, but the Zoom sessions are definitely going to be available for students to be able to ask those questions. But I think the thought there was to really help the students manage their day as well and make it as normal as possible because um, it's tough enough when you're in multiple honors classes or AP classes trying to balance that workload. Then if you've got teachers that are layering uh, times to meet on top of each other, a student would have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. So the high school is making that decision to really try to facilitate a better opportunity for our kids. Some more questions around uh, calendaring. So I think that's probably something maybe we could do a little video on Schoology and the calendar system and that uh, to help parents understand that better. Absolutely. I will also, I'm gonna steal the, this again just a second. Oh, looky there, we went right to our Kirkwood website that we can show you. Um, under, um, Kirkwood School, KSD Learns, this is, this is our, our um, COVID-19 website. So under KSD Learns, you can see that there are several um, possibilities here that we can go to. I'm just going to go for a second. We have not put all of these links on the family and student site yet, but we have, um, there's a Wakelet link that has lots of resources that were in, originally intended for our teachers, but I will be honest that we've been adding things to those um, just, as we've gotten good resources that, that may be useful to our students and parents as well. And a particular note for our families um, is this, this link here on Schoology and this one on Zoom. And there are lots of links within here that might be useful as people dive in and go, wait a second, I've never used Schoology before and I want to, um, I wanna understand it better. And so um, you can go to the Help Center, for example, And if I go straight to the Help Center, there's, you can go to the student section and that will give you additional information about, um, the, around parents. Or you could just log in and ask for more information there. And you can, you can dive in and, and, get, and, and go in a little bit further and see what the possibilities are. But yeah, here you could search for calendar and you could get additional information. Right, and someone has trouble accessing their Schoology account, and definitely uh, tomorrow at eight, or email me tonight. You all have my email from the registration, um, and we can get that. Um, but during the day, typically from eight to four, you can either call that hotline number, or there's this, there'll be a live chat screen on the kirkwoodschools.org forward slash COVID-19. Uh, they want to, there's a question about how students log into Zoom. Do they have a specific login? 
um, they do not have a specific, specific login. Um, what they will do is they will enter, um, basically they'll get a, either a link or an ID code from their teachers and that will be in the Schoology, in their Schoology account. Um, and so there are different ways with the, at the high school level with the laptops, there's actually a way that they um, can go straight in there and um, it, it will click on the link and open up uh, just like it might for any adult. Um, on the iPads, we had to do some workarounds. And so um, we've sent information to the teachers about how they can log in. But essentially, the students will go into, um, into, their, into their Schoology page and they'll copy the ID code and then open up the app because we push the Zoom app out to all of our student devices. Um, they'll open up the app and then they will um, paste their ID code um, into there and then they'll then they can join from there. Um, it's, it's actually not very complicated. I've shared the video with teachers and they're like, okay, our kids can do that. That's not a problem. Um, but we just wanted to make sure, um, well, it'll be an ongoing process as we teach kids how to do this work. Uh, well, the Schoology, a lot of questions about Schoology. So I think we, um, would do the parents see what the students see or is there something different that the parents yeah. see? Um, the parents will see what the students see with one exception. Um, there are, for example, there are discussion situations where, um, you know, my son may be in and he's communicating back and forth with other kids and can see their ideas and their work. Um, when I log in to as, as my son, and view his work, um, I'm not able to see other kids' information. I'm not able to see their thinking or their work. Um, so I can only see what my son is seeing minus other kids' stuff. Does that make sense? Do we have the ability to move apps around? Do parents have the ability to move apps around or group apps on their students' iPad? They do, um, but I would encourage your students to do that. Um, because it's going to be, you know, if, if they want to organize those in a way that's going to be useful for them. Um, and if, if they, if their teacher is asking for them to find an app and their parent has moved it somewhere else, um, it may be more difficult. Uh, Dr. Painter, where is the Schoology form to fill out online? I, I, someone's asking about how do they get into their Schoology account. And I believe you create a form if you don't have your. I did. Parents. And I need to remember where I put it. Um, you go look for that and we'll like try to get through some of these other questions. Okay. Um, someone's asking about if will students have the opportunity to retake a failed test? I think that's going to depend on when they've taken that test. If you're asking about tests that have been taken before this uh, school closure, that would certainly be a question to talk to their teachers about. Um, I think that moving forward, when we're looking at a lot of formative opportunities, um, again, communicating with that teacher about retakes. I know that when we've done, we've done retakes in the past and we've set up a lot of our standards-based grading, those may look differently with each of those teachers and may look differently with the elementary, middle, and high. So I think that is a great question to ask the classroom teacher um, and definitely let them know, you know why you're thinking about that. We want our students to be able to do the best they can. Um, so that is a great question for their teacher. Ginger, I found the form link. And so um, under KSD Learns Online, there's an area for families, which is where I'm at right now. And then I clicked on how parents and guardians can help, um, which probably will look familiar to the bullets that we discussed earlier. But every one of these you can click on and additional information will pop down. And at the very bottom of it, um, this last form right here is where you can go to request your personalized information to get a login account. And somebody and someone's asking, will reach out. Right. Someone was asking about the question about Zoom and the student being able to access that, I, I think, was more about the student wants to prepare for tomorrow and make sure their Zoom is going to work on their account. So um, yeah. I guess um, that would that help with that, that website? Um, it might, um, but what I can say is they, the app's already on there on, on their iPad. And so they can go there and, um, they, they can try, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen for them because they don't have accounts right now. I can tell you, I'm just being honest with you that our students are going to figure out, um, that they can probably create their own account. 
and that they are probably going to figure out that they can chat. They can even do a back channel conversation during, um, during this work. Um, those are functionalities that we have actually had turned off on our iPads, good or bad, I don't know, but we've had turned off on our iPads um, like FaceTime and messaging um, because it becomes a classroom management issue sometimes. Um, but we felt like, uh, particularly right now as we're doing this, um, we'd rather have students have access to, those, access to those things and teach them how to do it responsibly um, than, than block them from all of the great things that these, that these um, apps allow us to do. And if a parent wanted to practice that, there is a, you can sign up for a free psychology oh. account just as an individual. Uh, a and, free Zoom uh, account, or, yeah. Sorry, Zoom account. Yeah, as an individual totally and set up a meeting and send it to your student and they can try it out. Yeah. Uh, in addition to special needs, um, will REACH continue, Dr. Bailey? Yes. Well, what teachers, does that yeah. look like? Yeah. Our REACH teachers are going to be reaching, well, reaching out. That's kind of funny. But uh, REACH teachers and at the middle school as well um, will be trying to continue to provide those services and supports for our students. Um, we've shared with them lots of different activities that they can do for our students that are in the REACH program um, that they could be providing and pushing out at home. I will say another thing that we've coached our, our um, gifted teachers to recognize and realize is that they will also have to provide some of those social, emotional, mental health um, supports and, and check-ins for our students because uh, we know that this is a stressful time for everybody, like we've said, but being able to follow up with the students that they have and provide some of the supports that they have given the situation we're in, um, we'll be continuing to check it. But yes, REACH and our interventionists will be, will be checking in as well. So um, we're trying to keep everything as much as business as usual, just a different shift in the delivery method. Okay, and once again, somebody does not know their Schoology account, go to the website, kirkwoodschools.org forward slash COVID-19 and families fill in that form to get your information for all of your uh, students. I think we probably, I'm sure we'll be sending an email to our families at some time soon. And so we might just send that a link to that form directly out. We'll also pull it out and, and put it in a more prominent place on our website. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that we're, maybe we can send that out. I'm glad we're getting the questions um, because we really would love to have our families do this. Um, you also can reach out your, your, your child's teacher has access to your access code. And so you can also reach out to them and see if, if they can find that for you in Schoology. Our all of the emails from the teachers at the high school have their, do all their deadlines, Zoom meeting times put on the calendar by the teachers in Schoology. I'm not sure how those. I would really, I'd reach out to your teacher. Um, because there are, um, you know, there are a lot of teachers at the high school and they are, um, there are a lot of great things happening there, um, but some things may vary a little bit by department. And I also think, you know, it's going to be, tomorrow's the first day, so it's going to be a little bumpy and we'll work it out. And there's time, as Dr. Condon said in the beginning, a grace period for, through this process. So. Um, how will attendance be recorded each day? I think we touched on that at the beginning, but Dr. Bailey, you wanna to touch on that again? Yeah, it's gonna look a little different than whenever a student is at the school building and their teacher sees them walk into the classroom and they can check them as present during that day. So what we're going to do is assume that every student is present for each day, unless you as a parent are making a decision that they are just too ill to participate during that day. And you're just gonna call that in for our records um, I know that some may worry about like the attendance policy at the high school or worried about getting some of those letters. We're not going to be doing those pieces right now um, because we, we understand that these are different times for everybody and different challenges. Um, now, anything that happened before that, especially at the high school, if you guys haven't done um, kind of your meeting with the high school, you'll want to contact your grade level administrator to have that discussion. But on a daily basis for attendance, we're going to just assume that your student is present unless you report via the uh, phone call into the attendance line that they are just too sick to participate. And again, that doesn't mean that you can't have a doctor appointment or something else going on that day where they're gonna miss an hour or two hours. And in a normal day, you would call that in and say, I'm picking them up early or dropping them off late. We won't need to do that. Just if they are just too ill 
to participate that day, just go ahead and call in and we're going to keep those for our records as well. And then two more questions about will the kids have finals and another one about do we know if we will return to school this year and will there be summer school? So I can talk about yeah, the, the, all those are kind of uh, in progress. I could say um, the final exams would be a decision that we would make once we have a better idea about whether or not we're, we're returning to school. Um, we will definitely have to work with our teachers on taking a look at what those final exams look like um, if we do return um, because there's just different levels of instruction that are happening with online pieces. Um, I believe Dr. Condon touched on we're not sure about if we're going to be returning uh, what we know now is that we're out till at least April 22nd, um, but these things are changing on a daily basis. Uh, we don't have any information regarding summer school yet either. The, the state hasn't provided any guidelines for that, but as they process through different pieces of a school, um, school year, things like summer school, they'll provide guidance for us on. Okay, what about PE? A parent worried about movement. Yeah, it's a great question. Our teachers have been meeting, they've been talking. Um, I think you can probably expect our, 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 our health and PE teachers at all levels um, to give assignments that may require some accountability or it may be here are some ideas that you can do um, to get yourself physically active. Um, we are also uh, exploring some possibilities uh, with, from our wellness committee um, to explore some possible wellness opportunities that we could push out as a district that would be available to all of our students, regardless of grade, including our parents and our staff members. And so um, those would be some possibilities that you should look for in the next week or so. Also, Ginger, I, say, I do see one question just because I talked about attendance, but somebody asked specifically about A plus attendance and um, for students that are trying to qualify for that scholarship. And I wanted to let you know that the state is continuing to look at those guidelines as well. Um, I will say that the um, attendance percentages are something that they haven't fully uh, flushed out when it came to the guidelines. They're finalizing the different components for the A-plus scholarship. For example, the 2.5 GPA minimum requirement, there is some flexibility for schools on that. Um, what the guidance is currently for that attendance is that we would follow our normal attendance policy uh, and being able to look at some of those excused absences, but that is more of a local decision. But that guidance is, is again, being updated through DESE, um, sometimes on a daily basis. Um, somebody's got a great idea about worksheets that students complete that, like for second grade, they have worksheets that they're emailing, and if maybe we could make those fillable, like a fillable PDF. So mm -hmm. definitely that's a great idea, and that's something we'll look at to see. I will also that. say, that um, students on their iPads, they can complete them. It's not with a pencil, it's it'd be with their finger um, or a stylus if you have one, but they can complete those on there and then they can um, get them back to their teachers that way. Uh, hey, I know somebody's asking about library books, ebooks from the library. I think Kirkwood Public Library sent us something recently, I believe. Yeah, Overdrive is a way that you can check those out if you have a library card. Um, we, we are working with our librarians on that as well. Um, I can tell you that uh, many of our schools, particularly at the elementary level, they have, um, whether it's Epic or Myon, there are some different databases of, um, of books that are digital um, that kids can get as well. Um, but yeah, we're working on that so that we can make sure our kids have access to books. Someone asking about, again, about the, uh, the hours of the school day mirroring those, uh, the days now mirroring those of the school day. And I think if you want to touch base on that a little bit, both at, at all levels. Yeah, I think um, certainly at the high school level, if they are doing Zooms, it, it basically is going to mirror their schedule that they might have had. Um, and the middle school may be that way to some degree because they want to make sure we're not stacking and making students choose um, which Zoom meeting they might, uh, they might attend if, if there are multiple ones at the same time. But beyond that, I would say if it works best for your family to have the schedule mirror the way it normally was, then do it. Um, but if it doesn't work best or if it's causing too much stress for you or for your kids or for anybody else, then be flexible with that um, because there is that flexibility built into our day um, where you don't have to live by a rigid schedule that, that mirrors our bell schedule. 
Somebody wants to know, and um, Dr. Condon, you can probably help with this one, how to deal with kids not listening to us since we are not their teacher. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the kid, fortunately, the kids know how to get into all these tools that parents um, have some trepidation about. And so they know what they need to be doing. And um, I know my daughter at one point um, lives out of state and she told her son uh, that she was going to tell his teacher if he didn't get start working. And that guy, oh, his, there we go. <laughs> but, he, but he is, I have to admit, he's only six. So <laughs> I know that, that not, might not work for 16 year olds, but uh, I would encourage them the, to know that, you know, the teachers are taking a look at their work. They will be teaching. Students will be accountable for turning in their work. Uh, and so it's not like this is a vacation for everyone. Um, and so, you know, you, Feel free to set the tone in your home, uh, depending on, on um, you know, the parameters that you need to set because routines and structures are good for everybody and they can be set firmly and kindly. This will, um, this, I know this may sound funny, but we actually, we have, um, we have SEB coaches, social emotional behavior coaches in our, in our elementary schools. And one of their roles and expectations as, as roles and responsibilities during this time is to work with families who are struggling with student behaviors at home. And so um, I, I think if you're really kind of at your wit's end, um, then by all means, reach out to your school counselor or social worker and say, hey, Dr. Painter said something about these people who can help me with this. And, um, and, and we'll, we'll try to put you in touch with them. Yeah. And maybe you should have a webinar on that in about a week. Yeah. No <laughs> kidding. Have them join us. Yeah. No Dr. Bailey, here's another one about grades and performance, particularly at the high school. Uh, also about AP classes. So if you want to maybe touch on that again. Sure. I'll start with the AP. Um, the AP exam has changed in previous years. An AP exam consisted of a section of multiple choice tests that had a time limit, and then typically a section of free response tests that had a time limit. You had to report to a specific location to take that test. There were very controlled processes. AP has modified the exam based on the school closures and COVID-19. Um, and these exams will now be a 45 minute online free response exam that can be taken at home. So there will not be a multiple choice section. It will be basically the essay and performance event side of the free response piece. Colleges are in support of this solution and committed uh, to ensuring that AP students would receive credit for the time that they've spent working on that. Also, most of the exams will only cover the content that was taught up through around this time of the school year. So they're not going to be covering some of that new content. And for those that don't know, the AP um, syllabus and the AP content is very prescriptive in terms of what time of the year things are taught. So teachers follow the same uh, routine and pattern for that particular subject across the nation. Um, when it comes to grades, again, I want to emphasize that it'll be when we talk about formative grades, formative grades, if you think about sports and we think about practice, formative grades really are those practices that we put in um, for our students. So if you want to be a better free throw shooter, you're going to practice, practice, practice shooting your free throws. Not all of those free throws are going to count because you're not in that game yet, but that practice is what is going to help you become better for the actual game performance. And so when we talk about formative assessment and formative assignments, we really are talking a lot about those practices. They are vital. They're very important. We want our students to do them. Um, if you know who Michael Jordan is, Michael Jordan said practice to him was more valuable than game time. So we want to make sure that you guys understand that we want to continue to emphasize our students getting all the practice they can possibly get in order to continue to grow and master the content, um, but that we'll be flexible and we'll be working through some of these processes when it comes to those summative grades uh, to help decide what those grades are, but um, letter grades that were report on report cards. What I can tell you is that the high school is committed to ensuring that our students are successful, um, especially at the high school level, but all of our schools. But I know when we talk about GPAs, we talk about class ranking and transcripts for colleges, our high school is committed to our students being successful and having the same opportunity for those grades on those transcripts as they would have had before. So um, some of those questions, again, you can talk to the grade level principal or your grade level counselor or the teachers that you have in those classes. 
Um, but we want to make sure our students are set up for success. And part of that is, again, the social emotional wellness of not necessarily stressing about I have five AP classes and I need to make sure I'm getting everything done with those. Um, those AP exams, you should be getting some notification either directly from AP or from the teacher as well that some of those exam windows have changed and um, some of the opportunities for kids to take those exams have been moved up uh, while the content is fresh in their mind. So they should have some opportunities there, but definitely have your student or you contact that AP teacher to talk about when those national exam date opportunities are. Dr. Condon, can you speak a little bit about prom and graduation for our seniors? Yes, I know that uh, Dr. Havener sent an, sent an informational email out to our senior parents of our seniors. Um, so he has selected, or they have secured actually two potential dates in the summer. I don't have them um, in front of me offhand, but that was in the parent email. Um, two potential dates when they can get the Chaffetz Arena um, available um, to them if we are able to host um, a graduation over the summer. Um, if that doesn't work out, Dr. Havener did uh, refer to years ago when the graduation used to be held um, on the campus, and so I'm not sure what that looks like, uh, but he is committed to making sure that we, we do our hardest to try to get a, a senior graduation in uh, before the students start school next year. Um, prom, we're not so sure about. Um, prom has been canceled, uh, but we are trying to be creative. And uh, as we move towards summer, we'll have a little bit more information and be able to schedule some of those very special events for our seniors. I guess some teachers are setting specific times to meet with kids. Um, will students be penalized if they do not attend those sessions? They will not. Um, and, and, and some of that is because of um, equity issues, whether they have um, the technology that, that will give them that opportunity or whether it's um, um, even just the, the, what's going on at home at that time. And so, um, no, they will not be penalized um, if they're not able to be on the live session. Now, we encourage it if the students are available and can be there. Um, that's not an excuse to just sleep in, um, but, but we do definitely want um, to, to be mindful of, of the fact that we have kids in very different situations. I'm gonna jump in for a second because there was a great question about um, PE. Um, and then, uh, kind of, but... uh, on the PE question, I'm just gonna mention that um, our, our music and art teachers will be doing very similar things. We'll, we'll be sending out ideas and tasks to be done. Um, and and uh, as you all know, music and art are an important part of wellness as well. And so um, giving our kids these opportunities to participate in those activities, um, whether it's with technology or not, is, is a great thing to do. I think there's still a little bit of mystery around how the students will know there's a Zoom meeting. And I, I, it, I'm assuming it's gonna be in Schoology, it's gonna be in some kind of homework format so that they will, they'll know, oh, there's gonna be a Zoom meeting. Is that correct? Yeah, I would say so. Um, but I also think that um, as our teachers are reaching out to our parents and saying, here's the deal, there may be more answers than those, um, or there may be an opportunity for you to respond back and say, okay, should my child know how to do this? Um, it's entirely possible in some situations that the children already know how to do this. Um, and we as adults, um, understandably, are trying to make sure that they're going to be successful with that. Uh, but we just may not know that our kids know how to do it. There's no required hours that a student needs to be online. No. Correct. But I, think, I think maybe we can, you know, by looking at some of these questions, and I know we're getting close on time, that we, um, we should probably do some more messaging maybe another format when we know a little bit more uh, by the end of next week. Once again, this is all um, new territory that we're working through here. So I think a yeah. lot of things will become clear in, in this next week. And, and I think it's important, um, utilize your building principle as well, um, because there are, I mean, ideally we have this and then every school is able to do their own because there are some differences um, as, at, at different grade levels in different schools about how they do things. Um, but um, on an overall basis, um, we're all working together in the same direction, and that, that's one of the things we love about Kirkwood. 
And I think just one more question, because this seems kind of important about if the child has an IEP, Dr. Bailey, and they get assistance from special school district, um, how, and you mentioned it earlier, but could you just share a little bit more about what that will look like? Sure, and obviously it's gonna look different because the online system that we have set up is different than if a student is in a classroom and is able to access the teacher or a TA or a speech pathologist or OT or PT or any of those services. So those are gonna be really, um, have to be individualized for that student need. Uh, the case managers will be contacting parents and, and working through those processes with them. I want to say that that doesn't always mean that a case manager or resource teacher is going to be able to devote like their four hours of their office time to that direct instruction for those students, but they want to help coordinate what those pieces look like. And again, continue to emphasize independent practice levels for things, but it will look different. I know that and we know that and that it's going to be a challenge, especially for our students with some significant needs. Um, but work through your case manager on what that's going to look like and what the possibilities are for that um, because there are some cool apps and some cool options out there for our students to get a lot of independent practice. Um, but I know the challenges that, that our parents will face in supporting those learners and, and um, understand that and, and um, know that our resource teachers and our case managers are going to be there to help. I know that Ms. Nelson has been pay, uh, tracking some of these questions and putting them in a document, so we will certainly do our best to uh, message around a lot of the questions that you had here tonight that we may not have gotten to. Um, I know that there's a couple more things we just wanted to mention about our playground and our tracks and things like that. If Mike Ramey, if you'd like to stay a little bit about the work we're doing and trying to keep our kids safe. Sure, thanks. Um, as Ginger mentioned, we, we are trying to keep our kids safe and the community safe, and we just can't keep up with uh, cleaning all of our um, playground areas. So to, to keep everyone safe, we're, we're closing down the, temporarily closing down the playground. Um, We'll, we'll try to clean them, but it's it's in the best interest of everybody if um, we close them down. And that includes our stadium, right, Mike? Yes, we, we locked the stadium up. The gates to the stadium are locked. Thank you. Okay, Brandon, you wanna sign us off? Sure, I thank you everyone for joining us tonight. I hope you learned some information and some um, um, something that you didn't know before you joined us. I know it's kind of scary and tomorrow will be a little odd, uh, but we'll get through this together. Please remember to reach out to the resources that we provided with you tonight um, and have a great night tonight and stay well. Thank you. Be safe. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Mm-hmm.